Okay, we've got a little regular movement, regular 25 to do for Omar from Texas. And this is what it looks like right now. I would say it definitely needs some servicing. Let's take a little quick look at it. A little bit of rust here. And if I move the move the main wheel and I can see the gathering pallet jumping by let me hold the fan loose see the gathering pallet jumping back and forth needs a bushing uh, main wheel oh no anyway up to the top. It's kind of hard to see things right now. But let's look at the back. Let's look at the run side. Yeah. Se second wheel's really bad. And escape wheel, uh, also really bad. So there's at least uh, there's three bushings there. On the back side, let's look at the run side or the strike side. You hold the fan again. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell until we get that off of there. Yeah, the second wheel is definitely badly worn, third wheel badly worn, and uh, I can't see real good here but I would bet that it needs replaced too so I think we're going to see lots and lots of bushings but first thing we'll do is we'll get this taken apart okay we will take this apart and uh, that's stamped in so this can't be removed let's start with taking off the uh, hammers and the lifts for the uh, strike. Oh, first got. Okay, let's uh, start with a hammer and we've got to undo the spring. Uh, it's going to make sense. It's a little strong. Get my needle nose pliers here. slots I mean these things right here okay got that now let's take the uh, star wheel off and that little guy is uh, one of the older ones it is held on with a set screw so we'll loosen the set screw and then that should come right off does. Uh, newer ones that's pressed on and they're tough to get off. Okay, now we take things off the front and we're not going to take off the bird perch because they're put on with little pinch brackets. Uh, and we, they tend to break off if you do them. So first thing we need to do here is remove some C-clips. Actually, they're eclipse, and these are tiny ones. Let's see where the ends are. Unclip it. Grab a hold of it, maybe. Ooh, that's a little 
Where'd he go? There he is. That should come right off. There we go. It's awful tiny. It's just this little guy. Put that in there. And then this washer comes off. And that frees up this other stuff. But we've got to take the uh, E clip off of the off of the rack. Loosen it. Oop, it fell off on its own. Okay. Where's that? Alright. And now generally the the rack and snail come off together. There's your rack. There's the snail, and we've got the intermediate wheel, that's a plastic one, we really need to take a real quick look at that because sometimes these plastic gears get cracked, and that one looks okay, okay, now we got to take these levers off, and the first thing to take off is this this is a spring here that keeps tension on this lever. Okay, it's picking up okay. We lift this off of there. And then this will rotate around. And by rotating it around, it unhooks this at the top and pull it off the pin. And that's free. Okay, now these are both held on with eclipse as well and this one the eclipse is not on the back uh, both of them in fact are held on with eclipse that are on the back of the front plate so we have to take those off and find the front <laughs> that one popped and flew. And there it is. Get that new clip. And then we're going to get this other one. Try to keep my hands out of the way. see how how tiny those are all right and now what we're going to do is pull this one out yeah if we can get that oh, we're not going to get it right now i got to move that move that uh, gathering pallet so that's a slide, slide out and we can slide this one out Now we're ready to take off. What we should do is uh, see if we can get the uh, gathering pallet off right now. Let me see if uh, oh, there's my crow, crow's foot and slide it under there. And then tap it a little bit. Oh man, that flew. Shouldn't have done that. Hang on. Okay, so the gathering pellet came off. And, ooh, is it greasy? Yeah, that really doesn't need all that junk on it. Okay, we've got everything off now that we can get off. So the next step is now to take off the four. Well, yeah, we'll take off the four screws. And for that, I have. Better to 
to see. One, two, three, and four. And now we can now take this off. As we loosen this, I think I'll take the they call it a verge, but it's really an anchor or a strip pallet. And it's pretty dirty. But let me check it out here. Not worn really badly. Okay. Now the rest of these, this should come right off now. Okay, there we are. There's the plate off. And you can see some of this dirt that gets on these things. Pretty greasy looking. Okay. And there's your, there's your gear layout. And I'll take them out. It's tell this is a one day movement, 30 hour movement, because there's one, two, three gears. If this were an eight day movement, you'd have four gears. Okay, so let's take out this main one. I want to check that out in a second. We take out the second wheel and we take out the escape wheel. And on the strike side, there's this little fan. Then there's the warning wheel, and that one you can tell because it's got a little pin on it called the warning pin. And here is the, the gear that holds the uh, gathering pallet, and it's got two little tabs on it. Those are the tabs that actually push a lever that keeps the bird, the cuckoo bird, out. And here's the lever that that pushes on and this is the lever then that actually holds the holds the bird out and the door open and there's the main wheel for this one and now we got another e-clip to take off to get this lever off so let me, uh, let me get another pair of glasses here I'll switch between glasses get harder for me to see up close Okay, now we've got these glasses on, and this E-clip is right here. And we'll see if we can keep that from flying away as it pops off. Okay, there it is. Okay, and now this lever will come right off. Now the center wheel... Generally, we don't want to try to take it off. Let me see something. Move this this way and this way. And I don't see... This is a center arbor, arbor going through there. The pivot hole is not... It's not worn. So we don't have to worry about that anyway. I'd like to be able to easily take these off. To do a better cleaning job on that pivot, on that pivot hole, but that requires the use of a puller, and then you get into all kinds of other difficulties with getting things back the way they should be. This spring is what constitutes clutch. If I hold this still in the front, I can turn this gear. Okay, or if that gear is hooked up to the rest of the movement, it can't, it can't turn the whole thing. But when you want to move the hands, then this post will slip. There's just enough pressure on that to keep that, that uh, the power being transmitted from the, from the uh, powertrain to the, the uh, center shaft, and then the center shaft hooks onto the motion works. 
that's what moves the hands but you got to be able to move the hands without moving all of the other gears too and uh, that's the purpose of that that acts as a clutch so that's as far as we'll take it apart the only other thing I want to look at is look at this very closely and aha I see something that is a problem already let me what we see here this is the uh, run side and again another plastic gear and I see a crack uh, it's cracked right here they just should have made these a little bit bigger when they pressed them on but they press them on here so they're good and tight but that tension eventually causes them to crack and if I look carefully I can see that that crack isn't just limited to this part here but I can see that it is continuing right here down here so it's beginning to crack this way right now we could probably continue to use this let me see how tight it is it's real good and tight on the arbor so it's usable at this point I can't say that in the future this won't crack all the way out because they do and then what happens right now this will function just fine the way it is but if that crack continues all the way through it will tend to crack then right between two teeth either this one probably or this one and as soon as that cracks between those two teeth this the space between these teeth will increase slightly that increase then will cause when it gets to this point in running when this gear this these teeth begin to mesh with the uh, opinion of the next gear it'll it'll jam it'll get to this point and then it'll jam and the clock will stop so question is it's been around for a long time it's only cracked this far my assumption would be that it will continue to crack and it may take a very long time for that to continue to crack um, I don't know what we do uh, do we replace this uh, I don't know let me check something out okay. so here's our cracked gear and I went through my stuff and lo and behold I happen to have another one and let's take a look at it uh oh guess what it's cracked too not as badly as the other one don't like it let me check some more okay. took the plastic wheel off you see the crack there it does go down but I see someone has in the past has already drilled a hole right where that crack is that relieves the stress so the crack should not continue out um, I think though what I'll do just for the sake of making sure this is gonna stay okay is I'll put a little bit of a little bit of uh, super glue on the crack force it into the crack but I think we'll just leave it the way it is uh, the drill, drilled hole uh, should relieve the stress that was there
this should be okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to put these all the parts into ultrasonic cleaner and get rid of all the gunk that's on here. And see, this is what it looks, what a, a plate looks like before. You can see all these pivots, uh, like that one, that one, that one, all the gunk that's on them. And I'll wipe that off before I put them in the, in the ultrasonic so that you don't necessarily put more dirt in there than what we need. Here's the other plate. And you can see the dirt on these pivots. We'll clean those up. And then some of these parts are rusty. And clean those up and then we'll re-blue them if we need to. Uh, see, some of these are pretty nasty. Not at all clean. Okay, ultrasonic didn't clean these very well, so I hand cleaned these with uh, an acrylic polish and brush to scrub the daylights out of them, then polished them up with a buffing cloth, then used toothpicks in to clean each of the pivot holes. So here's our front plate, here's our back plate, and uh, they look better. And let's look at here's the runs. The hand cleaning also cleans those uh, pinion gears very well. And also, you can take a brush and go between the teeth. It cleans them even better. There's this one. Right, and then we've got the strike side, and that's much cleaner. Oh, that's the run side. This is the strike side. Goes on run side. Uh, here's the second wheel. Here's the warning wheel. This also goes. What did I do? Yeah, I had the strike side over there. Okay, strike side's over there. Run side is over here. Second wheel. Okay. This is the, and there's the escape wheel. Here's the warning wheel, goes over here. And there's our, and here's the intermediate wheel. And then all I gotta do is I gotta clean these up, get the rust and stuff off of them. Then I'll re blacken them, and we'll put them together and start looking for. Uh, the worn bushings. Okay, you got the wheels back in for both strike and run side. And now we're going to take a look at, let's look at this main wheel. Got a little play in it. That's in the second wheel. Definitely needs rebushed here. This is the back right now. Runs this way, so that's the worn side on the right. The unworn side is on the left. So I'm going to mark that one right here just with a little black mark. Okay, now go. Oh. Yeah, the uh, escape wheel. The escape wheel is very definitely okay. So here's the unworn side here. Alright, now let's take a look at the strike side, cuckoo side. Oh, 
main wheel feels rather tight. Second wheel. Yep. Right, and that's the way it runs. That's the way it runs there. So there's the worn side on the right. The worn side is over here. All right, now the warning wheel. Yeah, it's uh, moving around, okay. Now the on one side is going to be opposite, so we're going to have this one here. Okay, my pen doesn't want to work. Okay, come on, pen. And I don't know about the fan looks okay. All right, let's flip it over. And we will again take a look at the run side. Put a little more light up there. second wheel. Okay, this one runs this way. There's the worn side there, and the worn side's on the inside. Alright, and then we look at the escape wheel. Oh my goodness, I can see it without even moving it. It's uh, really badly worn. Look at that. Look at that escape wheel flopping around. You can actually see the worn, worn divot on that side, so we're going to have to do that one as well. Okay, so there's at least two there. Now on the strike side. Main wheel might be just a little bit on the loose side. We'll check it out. Oh yeah. The That's the one with the gathering pallet on it. This is the unworn side here. And then we've got warning wheel. like seven bushings we have to do. We have the second wheel and escape on the run side, both front and back, that's four. On the strike side we've got the second wheel and the second wheel and the third wheel, which is the warning wheel, on the back. So three there, four, that's seven total. So then what we do is we measure what each of the pivots is going to be, uh, what their size is, one millimeter. We write them all down, and then this is what we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five of the seven 
bushings have the same pivot size, so we'll always use the same same uh, bushing. Then this one has a pivot size of 1.2 millimeters, and this one 1.75 millimeters. So we're all set to go. Now we can drill holes and uh, put in bushings. All of these take the same reamer, number three, or I say 2.97, 2.97. The only one that's different is the front for the second wheel takes a 3.47, uh, no, it should be 2.47. No, 3.47. 3.47. Okay, so we're going to do the front side of the strike number two wheel, which is this one, and we're going to use a 3.47. Since this cuts the hole parallel, It doesn't matter whether we cut from the front or the back. Okay. So that takes care of that one. I'm going to take, I want to take the burr off of that. We can drive it in from either side. And it's probably just as easy to drive this in from the front, so then we get it flat on the back. Okay. And we will take the 175. And we will put that here. Get it nice and flat on the back. And what we'll do is we'll file that flush on the front and then we'll broach it out to fit the um, thing. Okay, I put a piece of sticky note on the plate to keep the file from scratching the plate. Well, I file down the raised portion of that bushing. Okay, good enough. Uh, I can take that uh, chamfering tool and make the oil sink just a little bigger. Okay, and now we will fit. We'll have to use a brooch to brooch that out to fit. And that's the second wheel on the strike side. So that would be, uh, that's the second wheel strike side. So we have to uh, brooch that out. <coughs> and I did get some brooches out for that one. Let me get a...
roots it just a little bit. And let's see where we are with that now. Pretty good. Okay, that's good. All right. And we'll smooth build. Okay. Those two are done. And there's no play in that at all. Down and there's ample end shake. Not too much. It's free. And I'm going to leave these bushings proud of the plate uh, simply because it gives more wear surface and they should last a lot longer. And there's no play in that now. So now all we got to do is the rest of them, they're all one millimeter. Okay, on this third wheel on the strike side, I chose to use a smaller bushing. Instead of uh, having to drill out a three millimeter hole and I had to drill out a two and a half millimeter hole. If I had gone with a three millimeter hole with the uh, one millimeter bore in it, it would have gone beyond the edge of the plate. It didn't leave much plate to work with. I mean it's it's getting very very close here. So I'm using a <coughs> 0.9 bore bushing which only has an outside diameter of two and a half millimeters and that still leaves a tiny bit of plate left on the outside and then I had to broach it out more so I had to broach it out to a, a millimeter the bore uh, sometimes you have to use a different bushing looking at how much plate you have to work with. So that's uh, that's why that one's a little smaller bushing, but it will uh, work just fine. Here you can see the two and a half millimeter hole to take the 0.9 millimeter bushing outside diameter. If I had gone with the full one millimeter bushing, that re has an outside diameter. Excuse me. Has an outside diameter of another half millimeter, and that would have gone through the edge of the plate. So we're going to use a smaller outside diameter and have to broach it out just a little bit more, which is what I did. There you can see 
how oblong that uh, is worn so I need to take this is where you need to have a nice fine file like this and we're going to go in here we're going to file out this side as much as what's worn on this side okay now that's filed out on the other side on the unworn side same as what's on the worn side now when I use the reamer it's going to drill out the center okay now there it is reamed out alright so we have the escape wheel done now and that's nice all we got to do is uh, the second wheel. So we got uh, one will go here, one will go here, and we'll be done with the bushing.
Moving brooch. Okay, now let's see what it looks like. That's the way. Front. shake good end shake and the bushing is done okay there's the whole movement clean rebushed everything ready to go back together that's uh, what we're going to do now okay first piece got to go back in is this one I'm sorry it's this one and that goes up here That's got to have a um, C-clip on it. We'll put a C-clip on it. This little guy's got to go in. Get that one. Put that pin up near the top. in the fan. Okay, then we got these to put in. <clears throat> we need to have the that's in there and ready to go on. Got those on. Gonna work. Just gotta put 
this stuff on. But you know, before I do that, I want to oil these front pivots. Because otherwise they're hard to get to with all that stuff on. We'll take a, one of these and we'll put a little bit of oil on these spots. Okay. This is the one that has a tab on it that the, the uh, cams on the minute, hand, minute shaft lift. That does the lifting. And that's got to have a C clip put on it. And then this one goes up here. It's also got to have a C-clip put on it, and then we will have Let's go ahead and put those C-clips on. I just ran this until <clears throat> this is underneath the rack. That drops that down, and that should bring the pin into contact with that. So this is when this gathering pallet needs to be on here. pin against the lever up here, this underneath here, that's where this gathering pallet should be, right there, so that that's dropping into that slot. Now what we got to do then is <clears throat> tighten it, and that's where Steak. Put it right over that pivot. Just give it a couple little light taps. Drive that gathering pallet on. And now, to see if it works, we can turn this. Till the rack drops, and that will be at the hour. No, well, that's half hour. Okay, there's the hour. Right now, it should strike. Goes once. Oops, how come it's not locking? There we go. And that locks. And if we drop this down, that's just on two. Let you go once, twice. Okay, if 
we advance this, then let me advance this to here. That's one, two, three, four o'clock. One, two, three, four. Okay, there we are, all set. And then to put this back on, with this in the lock position, that's with this underneath the, the uh, rack. Pin is up against the lever. I should have two of these prongs parallel with this side. So we put that on. Barrel. Like so. And that should be it. Let me tighten that down. Shoot. Stay there. Ah, uh, come on. Rotate it around, put in the short one. Rotate it around, then put in the hammer. Rotate it around, and I see there is a I don't know where they put that. There should be a little pin in there that uh, you hook the spring to. Well, anyway, they just use the hole, hook the pin through the hole. Oh, that's right, that's right. And now what we got to do is see if this works right. Let me trip the front. Okay, now let's see if that works. Okay, works just fine. That's all set. All right, we didn't have a pendulum uh, stick with this when it came. So I put just one on that I had, just put a pendulum on it. And it is running. And let me see if we can maybe put this up against it, pick up the sound. Okay, it does run. Okay, Omar. I'll well, send this back. Okay, so there's the movement, and uh, it's all set to go back to Omar.